Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can remove objects from an image inside of GIMP using a plugin called Resynthesizer. So the Resynthesizer plugin is basically an automated version of the Heal tool, which will work well for larger objects such as this boat we see here, that you want to remove and replace with pixels that look like the similar neighboring pixels. So in other words, you remove the object and the space that it used to occupy will start to look a lot like whatever is to the left, above, to the right, or below it. Inside of Adobe products such as Adobe Photoshop, this would be called a content-aware fill. But inside of GIMP, you need to actually install an external plugin in order to do this. So in order to grab the plugin, I'm going to include a link to a Mediafire page where you can download the compressed archive for Windows 32-bit and 64-bit. Aside from that, you should be able to Google around and find it. It's called Resynthesizer. So once you have the zip file, you can open it up and you'll see a bunch of Python files inside of here as well as the Win32 and Win64 folder. So depending on which version of GIMP you have, either the 64-bit or the 32-bit uh, GIMP installation, those are the ones you're going to need to grab inside of the folder. So you need to get the executable resynthesizer exe, resynthesizer GUI. So in my case, because I'm working on a 64-bit version of GIMP, I would need to grab these files. And where you need to put them is inside of the GIMP plugins folder. So so you can find that in the 64 or 32-bit version of program files, your GIMP 2 installation, the lib folder, and then you go to GIMP 2.0 uh, plugins. And inside of here, this is where you will put your Python files. So rather than creating a new folder for them, you actually want to drag each of these plugins straight into this folder. So that would just be drag and drop from your compressed zip folder. And then you need to grab the executable files that correspond with your GIMP installation and also bring those straight into this directory. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and restart GIMP. You are going to need to quit and restart the program so that it can reload all plugins. And when you've done that, you'll have a few new options inside of the filters menu. So the one we're going to need to use here is under filters enhanced heal selection. But you may notice a few other similar tools such as heal transparency and sharpen by synthesis. So in order to use the heal selection tool, we first need to draw a selection around the object we're trying to remove. Using either the free select tool or the scissors tool will probably give you a more accurate shape than using a rectangular select or an ellipse select. Um, so I'm going to go with the free select tool because this gives you the most control over your precise shape. So I can actually just left click here and move my cursor around the screen in order to literally draw any shape I want around this object. So in this case, I'm also going to try to go for these objects casting shadows and fishing poles because I want as little evidence as possible that there was a fishing boat in this photo beforehand. So uh, make sure you get the uh, shadows there too because it would be very unnatural to have the shadows with no actual object there. And I'm just going to continue drawing around, roughly getting the shape of this boat. At the end of your selection, you need to click on the original starting point to complete the circuit. And then you can double click inside of your selection in order to create your final selection. So now we go up to filters, enhance, heal selection, and you'll get a little pop-up menu. So we can just start with the defaults, but if you run into any issues, uh, trying a different option for sample from and filling order may give you better results. So if you do sample from sides, that means it's going to be pulling the pixel data from the left and right. And if you do above and below, it means it's going to be pulling pixel data to fill in the gaps from above and below uh, whichever pixel is being removed. And for filling order, I've been finding that random or inwards towards center seems to work better. But uh, let's give our head and try it with a filling order random. So we can see here it did an okay job of removing the object, but you can obviously see the little details that do not match the original image there. So in this case, I'm going to hit Control Z, and I'm going to go up to Filters, Enhance, Heal Selection again. And we'll try Sample from the Sides instead. And let's go ahead and hit OK here and see how that affects it. So that looks a little bit more convincing, not exactly perfect. So let's also try a sample from above and see how that looks. So if we do sample from sides, that's giving us a better result. But let's try changing the filling order to inwards towards center as well. And I think these are the settings I was doing for this particular object earlier. In my opinion, these options gave the best results because it has more consistency in terms of the wavelines. 
Uh, the only issue is when you get to the center area, uh, this is where it kind of obviously shows that it's not quite right. So you could go in here with a tool such as Blur in order to make this very obvious line become a little bit less obvious. So blurring some of the pixels together. Maybe we increase the size there. I'm just kind of going down on this line and hiding it just a tad bit more than it was before. So if we go ahead and zoom out, you'll notice that it's pretty hard to actually see these details without looking for it in the actual image. So if I get rid of this selection here, you can pretty much see that the object's been almost completely erased. And it's pretty hard to tell without zooming in right here that there's this inconsistency in the image. So yeah, zoomed out, that gives you your final result. And if we go back to the original, you can see the boat's there, but we filter it out. And it's pretty much completely gone with no trace. Uh, so let's show off the tool one more time. So over here I have some artwork of a bunch of viruses. So let's actually remove one of these using the Resynthesizer plugin. So over here, same idea, we select the area that has the object in and let the tool fill in all of the gaps after we remove it out. So I'm using the free select tool one more time and you left click and press and drag around in order to create your selection shape. And if you are doing it using this method, you can let go at any point in time. And your line will stop at the segment vertex there. You can continue any time just by left clicking and continuing to hold that down and drag until you get your shape. So you don't have to do it all in one go. And the closer to an exact selection of the object, uh, the better your results are going to be because that will leave more pixels surrounding it to fill in the gaps as well. So let's just try to go all the way around here. And then at the end, I'm going to let go and then left click at the original point in order to complete our selection. So now I just need to double click twice in order to commit that. Go up to filters, enhance, heal selection, and let's reset everything back to the default. So sample from all around and we'll do random filling order and see if that gives us decent results here. So to me, that actually looks very good. It even filled in one of those little squigglies from the side to be inside of here. And the replacement information with this little cloud down here also looks pretty good. So I'm actually very satisfied with the results there. So using this tool, you can get pretty good results with all of maybe a minute. So that's the resynthesizer tool. So once again, you can find the link to that tool in the description. You just need to install it to the GIMP plugins folder and then go ahead and make your selection, run it in the filters menu and you'll find it and other plugins that come along with resynthesizer in the enhance menu. So I've been Chris, that's going to be it for this video, and I will see you guys in my future video content.